Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toast and happy Monday. Oh, right. We like reset. You know, all the work we put in last week, chugging along, chug along, chug along, chug along. And now we're back at where we started. It's like, for what? For what? However, today's Monday has a bit of something je ne sais quoi in the air. Is there a little a joie de vivre I sense? There is because it's April Fools and I'm having a blast. A blast. So many jokes came my way this morning. So many outbound jokes from me to others. Inbound, outbound. I was doing my makeup. I was just cackling at all of the pranksters. So was I. So I woke up and before I could even grab my phone, like of course, your friend Dana, Redhead's Dana, this is her favorite day of the year. She got to all of us at like 6 a.m. What did she set an alarm? Well, she, I think, is an early riser. She actually got to the Redheads. I was already up. But when I first read her message, I was reading it like I thought I did. I wasn't on guard. And then the thing is, because with April end, Fools, if you're not first, you're last. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like you could get away with something later in the day when people have let their guards down. They're like, okay, the day is winding down. It's also just like, like, how did you find that person? Like, super busy. Like, when was the last time they thought about April Fools? It's a cacophony of um, ver- v- factors. So Dana sent out tailored messages to everyone in her life this morning. I actually FaceTimed with her like an hour ago and went over all the pranks we were just laughing she was telling me what she did to everyone she reached out to you she reached out to olivia she did the redheads and then our other friends too she was telling me what she did to them but now let me tell you i woke up with a text dana and i are always like talking about tiktokers and, and like people on the platform we both like spend a lot of time on the app we talk about elise myers a lot and she texted me and elise myers is this um creator who has been um mia like she wrote in her bio like taking a break and like no one's heard from her basically what happened was like pro-palestinian people like attacked her for not like speaking out about palestine and she was like listen she the last video she posted was that her son was getting having heart surgery she just had a baby and he needs heart surgery and then people like attacked her and she was like fuck you all i'm out of here like it's actually it's a very layered story if we wanted to get into it but essentially she's been missing from the platform dana texted me oh my god (laughs) elise meyer's arrested for money laundering so funny and let me tell you, as I'm reading it, I'm believing it. Elise Myers arrested. I'm like, oh, for money laundering. I was like, mm, no. I knew when once I read money laundering that it was a prank. It wasn't a perfect text, but it was a very good try. Yeah. No, she did really good considering we are all on her. Yeah. We all and- know. We're also like chronically online. Like we're prepared for this day. We talk about it a lot. But I texted like my friends from high school's chat because they like, they don't live in this dumb world that we do. Like they're normal. And I made like a fake tweet because we all like, for, since we were literally in eighth grade, like are obsessed with housewives. Um, I made a fake tweet like Luanne Dillaseps <laughs> found dead in her apartment. <laughs> and they, the text instantly oh my god oh my god Brooke Diana met this is so sad oh my god her children I was like wait no you guys I'm kidding and they were like they did not think it was funny. no that's like, like then it's not funny it's like what's wrong like, with you I took it too far what's wrong with you um but I'm having a lot of fun you know um I think notable brands and people who are having you know a good April Fool's that really got people a lot of people are talking about Soul Cycle. what did they do they were like, they put out a statement also really, really early, being like, we've heard the feedback, like we're gonna be scaling back our Taylor Swift th- themed rides starting April like 19th in the US and the UK, we will no longer be doing April Taylor Swift themed rides. And half the comments are like, oh my God, you got me. And the other half are like, well, actually I would really appreciate if you did scale back the Taylor Swift rides. Is that um, an issue a lot of- that they're having? I, I guess they do a lot of Taylor Swift rides because it's called uh, demand. You know, I'm sure they people want it. They do a lot it. of rides, special rides. Yeah, but I think there's like a, a spe- like a, a lot of Taylor Swift themed ones. But Listen, it must, they must it's do supply well. Supply and demand. If people didn't want it, they wouldn't keep doing it. So it was like a cute prank, but then all like the curmudgeons in the chat being like, "I actually would really like you to scale down." I saw on the Redheads account this morning, Barnes and Noble did a prank oh. that they were changing their name to Barnes and Nobles because I guess that's like what everyone calls them. Who the fuck calls it that? It's Barnes and Noble. I have never heard. And if you're like illiterate, what are you doing at a Barnes and Noble? You know, <laughs> trying to get literate. I happen to like actually really like April Fools as long as the jokes remain like funny and harmless. Like I just saw one Lisa Vanderpump returning to Beverly Hills, and it got me for a second. That's so funny because when I did my Fast Five, five shout out box on my Instagram this morning, someone put that in there, like Lisa Vanderpump returning as friend of and. I was like, oh, that's interesting. 
I passed on it. Not enough for a story, but it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, so like they almost got It was me. a prank. It was a prank. I guess if I had went to look for a story, I would have realized like that person didn't know. I would have just thought they didn't know what they were talking about. I didn't realize I could have been pranked in my suggestion box. You have to stay on guard. You have to stay on guard. I let my guard down. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, I'm glad I caught it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun. And of course, um, we Jackie and I did a podcast episode last night because it was just like a busy weekend for both of us. And we hate to like spend like 45 minutes. Well, actually, we love it. But it's nice to have like a dedicated podcast episode weekend update. Um, so we talked all about our weekends. And on there, we talked about um, that deli chain in, in Jersey mm -hmm. that said that they had been acquired by Jersey Mike's. It was a prank. But... But then we were talking about like just sort of like the etiquette around April Fool's and how starting it on March 31st like isn't cool. Unacceptable. And we said you should be legally bound to do whatever you you tried to prank us with. Like you only get the 24 hours of April 1st to make your prank. Make it count. Make it count. We don't go before and we don't go after. Those are the rules. I didn't make them. But I you will enforce actually them. actually did. I will enforce them. It's the enforcer. That's you. That's your superhero. I'm the name. April Fool's enforcer because I think it's a very, it's a very precarious holiday, and things could really go awry if we don't protect the sanctity of the holiday, especially in this age of disinformation and misinformation. What is the difference? The dis. No, but like for real, and the miss. It's just in the miss. Listen, Claudia. I'm sure you could read a whole paper about the difference, but why and both are so important. Especially in this day and age. So stay on guard today, ladies, okay? Don't get, don't get taken for a ride. But if you do, it's all in good fun, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope everything's okay. But do, sometimes someone will, like, send me a prank that's, like, such good news that it's I, when I have to, like, deprogram myself or I'm believing it, when I get into bed, I start feeling sad. Okay, so that's an interesting point that you bring up. Like, do you think in terms of like April Fool's etiquette, like it's better to be like, oh my God, like something amazing or like something really bad that turns out not to be true. I think it's better to try and just go for something random and like neutral in terms of emotion. Like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, because I don't want to be happy and then sad and I don't want to be sad unnecessarily and then happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an emotional day. So you got to go neutral. It's, yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. I think Dana actually really goes the neutral route and it's a very good like just random shit she texted one of our friends like oh my god josh just got a job working at like her husband's company like we have to set like it's just like so fucking random it's so stupid i mean <laughs> no she, not dana like bringing her got, husband into it she got someone so good today who margo lewin oh what did she tell her okay so dana's running a march madness bracket for actual i'm in it basketball. i'm in fourth place so apparently Margot Lewin has been like really following up to see how she's doing in the bracket. Like she's very invested. Into it. And literally just yesterday, Dana, they were talking and Dana was like, girl, like it's not good for you. Like there's no way you can. You're out. Yeah. And then today, and mind you, there hasn't been any new games from yesterday and today. Then Dana texted her like, oh my God, you're so close to winning March Madness bracket. Like, I no, And by the way, there's like 40 people in it and everybody paid $25. It's like a hefty pot. Yeah. She was like, I really think you could win. Like, oh my gosh, you're... Even though yesterday, just yesterday, she had said, like, you can't win. My You're mom out. was like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. <laughs> so sad. Yeah, but she got it, man. She I'm in fourth place good. in the bracket. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Turn and I was, take soul. I was in, like, 37th. Like, I'm doing really well. People want us to talk about March Madness. What do you have to say? Why? Because it's a sports podcast. Okay, let me tell you what I feel about March Madness. Oh, it's but we so should have clarified. Not a college sports podcast. It's so maddening. I am just mad about March Madness. You like, are. Let me tell you, I had Iowa winning because they were like, you know, a top team. I could see the headline. Iowa wins college conference. And I really felt like Iowa was having a moment because of Claire. No, what's her name? Caitlin Clark. You know her? Are you following Caitlin Clark? I'm not following, but I know who she is. She is like the biggest female college basketball player of all time. Not that that's saying much. Not to be mean. But um, she just like beat a record. She surpassed like career okay. points. I think of like anyone, any gender, any sport. Like something major. And any gender? 
yes, it was like a really big deal. Like all these celebrities came to the game. So they were just like having a big moment. And I follow Claire Kittle on Instagram and her and her husband met at Iowa. Iowa. And there's just been like a lot of Iowa in my Everything's POV. Everything's coming up Iowa. So I felt like maybe it was Iowa's time and I chose Iowa, but they're already out. Those and fucking also, like, losers. Caitlin plays on the women's team. This is a man's conference. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just felt like maybe Michu she was Ju boosting. Was I Michu thought she Ju. was boosting morale of the entire Iowa community. I could see how that could, how you could think that. Because everybody just like the obvious ones, like Auburn, Alabama, you know, Duke. Duke. Like, who gives a fuck? No, like, so to me, who do you think of as like the best college basketball team? College basketball. Like for me, it's Duke. Harvard. I don't know why. Oh, I don't know. Harvard. Like I don't know. I, they I don't know what in the conference. I didn't know like where you were going with that. No, like just for me, I just have this random association that like Duke basketball is the one to beat. It, it like is. It is like When's a big thing there. When's the last time they won anything? I don't know. I don't know. I just like, I don't give a fuck. You know, it's so hard to to do a segment on March Madness. But like, I literally know zilch. And there's not even like anything cool going on. Like, it's not like there's a moment that I could, like, I don't know anything. Yeah, but people are enjoying it. It's bringing people together. It seems harmless. I endorse that. Yeah, and I'm loving the bracket. I check it literally every day. I didn't get my picks in or else I would have won. So it's better for you guys. Thank God. That's just classic me. Yeah, like she could win, but she's not going to. <laughs> it's giving it it's giving Duke. I don't want to ruin it for everyone. Right, no, but right. But Dana would attest. Like, she knows me. Mm, okay. She knows sure. me. Dana knows. Sure, Jen. Sure. That's also because she'd probably rig it for me. <gasps> she can't rig it. It's done through Yahoo. It's very legitimate. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, done through Yahoo. <laughs> It is. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's done through Yahoo. It's very legitimate, very secure. You could never break like it. Like AT&T secure. Did you see what happened there? We talked about it on the toast. No, there's a new one. Oh, what now? I'm so glad I have Verizon. Major data breach. Major. Okay, but like what on earth does that mean? Because Claudia, no, this I one's bad. This one's social security numbers included on the dark web. Bad. Millions and millions because like, I get these, these things on my phone, like when I'm like, you know, d logging into my Zara app, they're like, this password was found in a breach. Do you yeah. want to change it? And I'm like, no. Oh, should I? I it never do. OK, I think it depends on what you use it for. Like for Zara, like, OK. Yeah, no, it wasn't like, you know, my bank app login. Right, right. So I get that, too. It depends what I'm using it for. I don't like store any information even when I shop at places because like I just don't. I'd rather inconvenience myself by putting in this information over and over again yeah so what you want to see my shopping history go off yeah yeah I guess that's true it depends on it's app dependent it really is at least there's levels of security to this operation oh well we have a great show today it's Monday which means there's just like a lot to catch up on from you know the comings and goings of celebrity culture over the weekend Jax describe the stories for me in three words a lot of fun I love it. I think we're going to have a good time today. Oh, I just wanted to give everyone an update on my finger because I know everyone's like freaking out. Turdy, like you hit bone. It's healing really nicely. Turdy, you hit bone. That's you want to see something bad? It will be only for the YouTube viewers. But guess yeah. what happened to me? I don't know. I burned myself. <gasps> oh, cooking or hair? Cooking. The oh, did oven. you like lean it on the I pan? Was, no, I was like putting something in the oven and my <sighs> forearm hit the oven door. Oh, no. And it was at 4.50. <sighs> and you've got that, you know, Jewish milchadik skin. It's very porcelain-like. It's very... Um, I, I mean, this would have hurt anyone. No, no, it wouldn't have hurt someone like Tan. No, it literally would have. It's no, I always, I always end up on like TikToks where people talk about like their African and Mexican parents who like don't get burned. It's like a thing. Interesting. You have like the worst type of skin for any type of burn. I needed oven mitts. Well, the reason why it happened is Were you I not was, wearing? No, I was wearing oven mitts, but only like, you know, ankle, like uh, wristlets. Wait, I didn't not even know they made them. all the way up. Oh, mine go all the way up to my elbows. I didn't even know they made short ones. But it was because I was using both racks in the oven. I usually only use one. And I've got that slide in and out, you know, down pat, muscle memory. Yeah. But this one, I was yeah. at a different angle. Your girl got hurt. I'm so sorry. Like, that's just, it's it's devastating when food, you know, something you love the most hurts you. Yeah, but you know what? It's okay, because I didn't realize until, like, just yesterday, looking at it, how bad it was. Like, I thought it was going to be like, you know, I always, like, you know, 
lightly burn here or there, but mm-hmm. no big deal. Goes away. Did you do anything to treat it? I've been putting bacitration and active skin repair on it when I am around the bottle. You know, a little hack that I don't know where I heard it, but I always do it. Like when I really do burn myself, you have to take an crack an egg and like take some of the white and put it on the blister. Then it won't blister. Interesting. I'll think about yeah, it. Yeah, just like a little medicinal facts from Dr. Turd. Dr. Turd, that's a name you can trust. 1,000%. Come see us anytime, day or night. Oh, I recently discovered a hack. Hmm. And I like don't want to share it, but I feel as though I should share it with my New York girlies. Because like something recent, like I've been really trying to up my water intake. I've been so good with my Stanley. And I literally pee 55 times a day. So um, I've been going to the kosher grocer all the time. And every time I like pull up there, I always have to pee. And I don't want to be rushed through the kosher grocer. Like I want to enjoy my time leisurely. And there's a city MD next door. And they let me pee. And it's like the cleanest bathroom ever. I'm like, I feel like nobody knows to go into a city MD. Everybody goes to a Starbucks or a Chipotle. And then, you know, I was driving back from the soda method this week and I had to pee so bad and Ben pulled over and dropped me out of Chipotle and there was like a thousand people and I couldn't wait. Then we drove to City MD. Boom. They had three bathrooms all empty. You I just should have like, gave, kept that. I know. I know. But the girls need to know if you listen to this podcast, like you're obviously not a piece of shit. And I, I'm happy to share that with you. That's really generous of you. I feel Any like sort of urgent that. care. It's a hack. Uh, maybe I will. Fuck. But there's going to be lines. It's going to be trash. You should have kept that to yourself. And I also feel like it's it's not like a public, it's not like a government building, but like they have a duty, to, like they can't turn people away. Do you know what I mean? Like they have to let you in. It's not like customers only. So too. It's like a medical yeah, facility. Yeah, that could You're, also ruin it. Like if too many people start using it, they could be like, okay, we were doing you a solid, but you're, everyone's been taking advantage of us. Oh my God, do you think I just ruined it? I, I think you might have. We'll have to see. Okay. We'll have to see. Well, I feel like I'm ready to dive in. I'm dying to know what the stories are and just continue chit-chatting with my girl, you know? Let's do it. Without further ado, do, 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 here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Say. Say, award-winning cleaning and planet positive makeup brand that is sold exclusively at Sephora. It's just a, a gangbusters brand. Whether you're coming at it from like a makeup lover looking for good products or you're coming at it for like a clean queen looking for clean beauty products, you're going to come for the clean cleanliness. You're going to stay for the products. They have so many fabulous. Today, I'm actually wearing the cream contour and the glowy super gel under my makeup. So they have several award-winning best-selling products, including a Best of Allure winner, which is their Slip Tint SPF 35. It's a tinted moisturizer. Also, their Dew Blush and their Glowy Super Gel. They refer to themselves as the clean complexion experts because each makeup product is meticulously crafted with sustainability in mind and packed with good-for-you ingredients. So they leave out over 2,000 ingredients that are deemed potentially harmful to skin. So whether you have a hard time finding makeup that doesn't break you out or you just have really sensitive skin, Say is a really good option too. I love the Glowy Super Gel. It is the ultimate, ultimate effortless no makeup makeup glowy product. It is a multi-use illuminator that hydrates and brightens skin for a fresh, dewy look. When applied, your skin will immediately feel refreshed and it looks lit from within without those chunky pieces of glitter or shimmer. So whatever you're going to say beauty for, I highly recommend the tinted moisturizer, that glowy super gel I'm wearing today, and the cream uh, bronzer I'm wearing today. I love the brush that comes with it too. You can shop Say Beauty exclusively at Sephora. It is a fabulous brand, clean, good for you, good for the planet, good for everyone. And check out Say Beauty, that's S-I-A-E. Today's episode is also brought to you by Stamps.com. When you're making decisions for your company, you are always looking for the no-brainers. And if you have a lot of mailing and shipping to do, Stamps.com is the obvious choice for a reason. It streamlines your processes and makes your business more efficient, freeing you up to focus on the bigger decisions. So take care of all of your mailing and shipping needs wherever you are, even on the go with Stamps.com and the mobile app. All you need is a computer and a printer, and they'll even send you a free scale. You can easily schedule... Pack up package pickups through the stamps.com dashboard and you'll automatically see your cheapest and fastest shipping options from different carriers. You know, in this economy, everything is just going up, up, up. And when you're running a business, you need to find solutions and stamps.com is the package solution. They're going to help you ship most efficiently and most cost effectively. So you can mail your checks, invoices, legal documents, books, everything you need to keep your business running. Seamlessly connect with every major marketplace and shopping cart if you sell online. And you can access USPS and UPS mailing services that you need to run your business right from your computer or your phone at any time, day or night. 
There are no lines, no traffic, no waiting. Get the rates you can't find anywhere else, like up to 89% off USPS and UPS. Order shipping and mailing supplies and even printers from the supply store when you run low. So make the same no-brainer decision as over 1 million other businesses with Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code TOAST for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code TOAST. That's code T-O-A. ST. Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry about where you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets online for all the sports, music, comedy, theater, events near you. They have killer last minute deals, all in pricing and views from your seat, plus the lowest price guaranteed. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. So why you should use Game Time? Let me tell you. They've got last minute deals, so you can save up to 60% off buying tickets last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. They have flash deals, so you can save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or, or the event. They also have all-in pricing, so gone are the days of like selecting a ticket, and then by the time you check out, it's double the price because of all the fees they didn't tell you about. Game Time allows you to toggle this feature to show the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. You're getting seat views, like a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy, and they have the lowest price guarantee. They will credit you 110% of the difference. They also have the game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Buying tickets is just an awful experience, like all the time. It's expensive. You never get the seats that you want. Game time is out here shaking up the industry, and we do have a code. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code toast for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again you have to create an account and redeem the code t-o-a-s-t to get that $20 off download the game time app today it's last minute tickets it's the lowest price it's guaranteed thank you claudia it's a pleasure okay doing our business with you it's a pleasure doing business with you too you look our pretty today Thank you so much. I'm loving your little slut strands. Yeah, and I can stomach these because the rest of my hair is up, so these are, are not really in my way. It's cute. And I think it will pair nicely with the headphones. Only time pairs, will tell. It pairs nicely. Thank you. Our first story is major couple spotting news. Keenan Thompson was spotted with a new leading lady, Minka Kelly. Wait. Keenan from SNL? Was spotted with Minka Kelly. Wait, that's like kind of crazy. Out and about. And there was even confirmation from Keenan's Uber driver. Oh, shut up. I hate you. I thought there really was confirmation. Are there pictures? Oh, my God. Are you okay? She's silently laughing. You guys, we can't hear her. <laughs> yeah, there's pictures. I mean, I absolutely have to go look. I didn't even. This is news like that would have come across my desk. I wonder why it didn't. Oh my God, you got me. <laughs> because I'm looking, Keenan Thompson, Minky Kelly, two results. And it's literally like not, oh my God, you got me. That got is her. excellent. How did you think of that? Claudia, I've been scrambling while you were doing the ads, like going through all the lists. To on think my of phone, an ad? To think of a good prank, going through the list. Of, like, that's your not of an ad, that's what I meant. Of your favorite stories, like what I could do. With Wait, like, that was really good. Oh my God, thank you. I was Jackie, panicking. 10 out of 10. I can't wait to watch that back. I so believed it because like it's honestly like not that crazy. No, I went like, to our list of eligibles. I plucked two who like we would love to see together that we're always talking about that I don't think are attached at the moment or at least not that is top of mind. Well, I thought she was like with Trevor Noah, but it's murky. And then I did want to tie it back to Keenan's Uber driver. I did like want that to be. Of course, because all roads literally lead, lead to the Uber driver. Right. So that's your bit of April Fool's. Well, I got today. got today. I got got. I've been ducking, diving, dipping, dodging. But you got me, Jax. Came from the one I, closest to you. I thought this was like a totally safe me. pranks. You yeah. Th you thought you could trust me and you couldn't. I can't. I'm Good not trustworthy. Know. Good to know. But I will lay down my arms and say, I will not prank you again in this episode. Oh, thank you. Oh, and my God. my word, you have my word, which means something. It does mean something. I, I, now I can relax. Because I never said I wouldn't prank you. You didn't. You didn't. It was you, a lie by omission. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, our first story, something we talked about on the Patreon last night a little bit, but there's more developments in this nutty story, which is that Tori Spelling has called her husband, Dean McDermott, mid-podcast to tell him she filed for divorce. I'm like, really? I'm personally like, 
I don't want to be the type of consumer that contributes to this story because like if this article gets clicks like then they'll continue to write stuff up like this and Tori will continue to act in this way and I don't know how like the daughter of Aaron Spelling like became this way and why like what is this an April Fool's prank I I thought that but the episode came out on Sunday the podcast episode that's yesterday like if it is an April Fool's Joke, I don't care, like, you're getting divorced. Well, Tor, you, like, you could not convince me prior to you telling me the story that these two were still together. There was, like, there was a five-year period where every single day it was a story about them fighting something, something. husband, We were cheating. talking on Patreon yesterday. There was pictures of them that came out last week of them, like, fighting at their storage unit. Like, seriously, like, it looks like a miserable, like, fight. Experience. And the paparazzi don't just hang around the storage unit. So, like, you call them up to take pictures of you fighting? No, no, and... By the way, for many, many years, probably until she came on Real Housewives of New York, like Candy Spelling and Candy, Kathy Hilton were the same person to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they both have like iconic last names and their names start with K. Um, now, we were talking about Tori Spelling last night because Tori Spelling fell into the trap that many, you know, women with platforms have fallen into over the years where they make their uh, April Fool's prank on people that they are pregnant. They announce a pregnancy. And it always turns into like, this isn't funny. Women struggle to get pregnant, yada, yada. And it's become like a thing you can't do. And if you do, you're going to get canceled for it. Um, Tori Spelling is the last person of note, to my recollection, who did it. And I am very much looking forward to finding out this year if anybody is dumb enough to do it. They might be. Or maybe like they know it's a great way to get attention. attention. Negative attention. All press is good press. Haley Bieber did it. Remember that? Yes, she One did. Time. Like many, many years ago. And my friend Mary Orton, actually, she was telling me that she announced her pregnancy on April Fool's. Yikes. By accident? No, like, I think, she, like, it was real. Like, other things can go on on yeah, April yeah, Fool's. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. Think, like, and, but then it was the same day that Haley Bieber did it, and then everyone assumed Mary's was taking, she was going down with her. And she was like, no, 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 I'm really pregnant. Okay, I just want to say, I don't know your friend Mary Orton, no, because... She, not the best choice for my friend Mary Orton. No, no, that's fine. She's definitely a firsty lassie, Mary Orton. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I just feel like definitely like a little threatened by her. Um, and I need you to stop talking about her because I feel like literally all we talk about is Mary Orton these days. Like, and I know you have another friend and she's an influencer and that's great. That's great. I'm happy for you. But if you could kindly shut the fuck up about it, that would make <laughs> me feel better. For sure. And I would totally love to honor your feelings and it holds space for them but what's the difference between me talking about Mary Orton and you talking about Tinks oh I'm so glad you brought that up Tinks is family you know <laughs> so would you not be not want me talking about Satchel or Olivia like it's family yeah, to a degree like I feel like there's definitely a threshold for the amount that you could talk about okay sisters. by the way in, in all seriousness when it comes to Tinks I'm glad you brought that up do you feel any sort of way? Like, I've made it very clear. Like, I am threatened by Mary Orton. Stop talking about her. Yet you continue to talk about her. When I talk about Tinks, I feel like you're, like, interested in what I have to say. I, I am. I would only be, like, threatened in a joking way for content, you know? I'm actually threatened, so stop. Interesting. I was just yeah. talking about Mary Orton this morning, too. You don't stop. <laughs> you, she was texting me about Mary Orton. And by the way, who is Mary Orton? Like, how Mary do you know her? Out. You're about to find out. We met on the gram and I had I saw one of her videos and I saw that she followed me and I followed her back and then it turns out like she listens to the toast all the time. She's going to hear this. Do you have anything that you want to say to Mary Orton? My friend? I, you know what? I do. <laughs> Watch your fucking back, Mary Orton. <laughs> I'm coming for you, bitch, okay? Hear that. Anyway, so yeah, she announced her pregnancy on April Fools. That's funny. Once upon a time. That's very funny. Truly pregnant. That's confusing. So I will be keeping an eye out for anyone dumb enough to fall into that trope today. I hope someone does. Keep the Me day too. interesting. Keep us on our feet. It's my favorite part of April Fool's how like n nobody learns. Like if you're paying attention, like you know. But then you're right. Some people might just be doing it for that attention. Right. But also it's like how come you can make a joke that someone died? I'm glad you brought that up. Because the reality is so much more positive. Like, they're not dead. Okay. With pregnancy, it's like, the reality is you're not pregnant. And that's, like, triggering? I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like there's, these are, like, guardrails that were put in place that maybe are a little willy-nilly. Fair. You can do this, but you can't do that, even though they're both kind of messed up. Yeah, I like that. Willy-nilly guardrails. Willy-nilly guardrails. 
So Tori Spelling may or may not be getting divorced on her podcast. Let me ask you something. Like if you were ever going to get a divorce, which God forbid. Plus for Shalom, plus for Shalom. Times, like would you call him up live on the show to tell him? Literally never. <laughs> well, how could you even ask me that? Literally you never. The, you wouldn't put the content first. No, <laughs> I wouldn't. That's surprising. Yeah, no, it's shocking that somebody like me who's you know, so desperate. Like, even I do. I have boundaries. No, it's shocking that, like, we live for the podcast and we'll do anything for our podcast. Like, it's a core tenant. It's our life's work. work. And yet, even we would never do such a thing. Whereas, who even knew Tori Spelling had a podcast? And well, that she would, you know, use her relationship. I, I also, no. like, I don't even want to talk about this story seriously because I really feel like it's April Fool's. That would be and so. That, and if it's not, it should be. Because Tori Spelling has historically done insane things like claiming she's pregnant on April Fool's. She's but kind she of did this, it on Sunday. She's kind of Dana as a celebrity. Yeah, but Lives in a mentally ill Fools. capacity. Lives for April Fool's. We'll never I want to see. A, an, maybe she joke. posted like an update on her. Well, they're definitely Am I blocked like by Tori Spelling and going through a hard time. They always are. Yeah. By the way, I feel like. I'm She's blocked by Tori banned, Spelling. Claudia. She is. Oh, by the way, not only am I not blocked, she follows me. That's so funny. Does that change what you have to say about her? So 11 hours ago, she, I think, announced her podcast, Misspelling. Yeah, that's the name of it, Misspelling. Oh, I guess that's why I didn't know she had one. I think it's real. She looks great, I just want to say. On the cover of misspelling, oh, all just of like I'm, I'm looking up at her Tori Instagram. Her. I'm looking at Tori her Instagram. Changes. I haven't seen it. <laughs> like she looks fab. She looks like she's living she her does. best life. She does look great. But oh, let me watch her story. Her story spelling. That's it. Her story spelling. That should, that would be a good name for her podcast, like Story Time. I feel like she could have done. A lot. Margo, why are you ignoring me? I'm not. She also followed up hard with me today after like three minutes that I didn't answer. It's giving like victim energy. Yeah. Maybe because it's April Fool's. Everything's just out of whack. It's the opposite. Oh, for sure. Huh, I'll enjoy it. Are you ready for our next story? So I'm just going to table that story spelling. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you guys. Like you're not going to come away from this podcast with an idea of what's going on in Tori Spelling's marriage. And you're not going to come away from this podcast like post for one, knowing what's really going on in the world. You know, no, like you're I, not. I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm still holding space for this being a prank. Yeah, I guess you could listen to her podcast to find out for yourself. And I just want to say it's kind of like a major slay to like announce your podcast with a prank on April Fool's. Like that, it'll make a splash. Her podcast, I swear to God, would never make the Fast Five. No, no, no. The more I think about it, the more this is April Fool's prank, and. We're talking about her podcast, which, as he said, didn't even know it was happening. Ten. And like I'm going to give it a 10. Yeah, no, I'm going to give it a slay. And I feel like her relationship, I feel like some people's relationship are personalized. Like, they've already sacrificed in the name of fame. Fame. And, and I feel like the two of them have an understanding. Yeah. Like, we're just going to go out there. We're going to call the paparazzi. We're going to put on a show. And we're going to come and, home, and I love you. And we're going to be in love, yeah. But I will say, like, Perhaps my least favorite type of internet behavior, specifically podcast, is the Jana Kramer, you know, silhouette. Like, using your podcast to work through your marriage. Like, it's not our business. It's not the place for it. And I hope Tori Spelling's podcast does not become that. Because look what happened to Jana Kramer. Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? I am. Rebel Wilson's memoir continues to make headlines. There's a wow. couple today. Yeah, so Rebel Wilson claims that Adele hates her and didn't like being compared to the actress during their bigger years. So in a new excerpt... Oh my God, wait. I'm obsessed. In a new excerpt from her forthcoming memoir, Rebel Rising, Memoirs of a Rebel, uh, Ups Weekly obtained an excerpt and it said this... Quote, some actresses would get offended if I called them plus size in this book. So I have to be careful with what I say. This is why I think Adele hates me. 
There was a moment when she was bigger and some people would confuse us for one another. To be fair, she went on noting that she was making an assumption about Adele, saying, to be fair, I've never asked her. Uh, She also claimed she crossed paths with Adele at several events. However, when she attempted to approach her, Adele would allegedly always quickly turn away, as if my fatness might rub off on her if I were near her for more than 30 seconds. Well, I have to say, like, saying this without any proof is, like, kind of crazy. That's kind of a crazy thing to write in your memoir in perpetuity. Like, I have a feeling about yeah. this. And it's, like, kind of a mean thing. It's a, it's a it's quite an accusation. And I'm going to name names. As opposed to being, like, I feel like there, you could say there were A-list yeah. women who I felt like didn't want to be associated with me. But yeah. to say, like, well, I got a feeling ooh, 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 that Adele doesn't want to be next to me. Like, that's... Yeah. Like, now she definitely doesn't like you. <laughs> no, <laughs> totally. Also, I have a memory of a very early interview with Adele when she was just starting out, like, Chasing Pavements, where somebody asked her about the comparisons to someone. I might have been Rebel Wilson, but it might have been someone else. And she basically was just like, stop comparing me to just fat people. Like, I know that is a thing that, like, Adele felt early on in her career that, like, people would... And I say that all the time. Like, that's a whole thing in my special about how, like, if you're fat, they just compare you to, like, other fat people with the same hair color as you. It's like, it's not like a nuanced doppelganger, you know, think thought process. And... I don't know if Adele would run away from her in person because she didn't want fat to rub off on her. Like that's, that's going, that's a stretch. But I do know that Adele did not like being compared to other people who were of the same size because they necessarily didn't look alike. They just were similar sizes. Yeah, that's a different thing to say than to say she didn't want to be next to me. Adele saying, I don't want to be compared to someone. Also, if Adele had said that about Rebel Wilson, that would be in this book. So it definitely was. But if her. she had, if, if she, she had, had any, any proof, sort of proof, yeah, yeah, I don't know. This is a kind of a crazy thing to say as fact when it might just be your feeling. Yeah, I guess in your memoir you write your feelings, but I think when you're talking about real people and at this level, you got to have more to that you're working with. Yeah, and there definitely was a time where. Um, Rebel Wilson and Adele were on the same level, like fame wise. And I would say now they're not. And it's just like, you know, she's punching up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To like include Adele in her book. Yeah. It's like kind of giving like tacky, desperate energy. Where, yeah. It's almost like she's like attacking like everyone in this book. I'm like kind of obsessed. <laughs> no, I know. She's really making a good case for wanting to read this. By the way, it's not off the table. By the way, I don't know if you've seen, but she admitted to using Ozempic to help lose the weight. She oh, did no, I didn't see that. She did a new interview with the Sunday Times, and she admitted she dabbled with the type 2 diabetes drug for maintenance after shedding 80 pounds. So she said someone like me could have a bottomless appetite for sweets, so I think those drugs could be good. She added that she no longer uses it, though. Well, when she had lost a significant amount of weight, did she say what she did? Or she just like showed up one day skinny? I forget. Um, I don't know. Was she the one who was walking and hiking? Or no, that yes. Was, no, that was Adele. I thought. No, no, the hiking was. By the way, not as confusing. <laughs> Rebel Wilson. No, but like Adele did her interview with Oprah, and I'm pretty sure she was doing like massive hikes. I remember like Rebel Wilson like took a break from social media and like came back skinny and on a hike. Oh, Do you remember yeah, yeah. that? No, she, no, okay, but by the way, like two people can go on a hike. It's so true. But. What had she said? She said that she, oh, I didn't even know this. She said that she embarked on her year of health in 2020 after talking to a fertility doctor who told her she had a better chance of a successful IVF if she lost weight. Who's that? Adele or Rebel? Rebel. Got it. She decided to take on the challenge for herself, starting slowly with long walks and a low sugar, high protein diet. Eventually, she worked her way up to two and a half hour workout sessions consisting of running up the steps of the Sydney Opera House in Australia and doing crazy cardio sessions. Good for her. Um, Cool. Like, maybe I'm unique in the sense, like, I don't need people to admit, you know, like, do whatever you want. For sure, but you found it interesting. For sure. It is. uh, Jackie, as kind of the the, the current face of Ozempic. You have to say the right things. I have to say, like, you know, Ozempic neutral. However, like, good to know. Good to know. Yeah. But you could just, you could be honest, you know? Yeah, if you want to. No, no, I'm saying like you can be honest about the fact oh. that like, yes, people don't owe it to us to tell us. They don't. I find it interesting. 
I do. Even though, like, I would have found it more interesting if she had lost all the weight with, like, using it for maintenance. Like, okay, cool. Who cares? For, and, like, she was maintaining, using it for maintenance then and not on it now, maintaining. Like, yeah, like, you lost the 80 pounds legitimately, but now after you lost it, you're going to use the, you know, it's a, it's a shortcut. It's a help. It's a, it's a crutch. It's giving kernel of truth. It's giving kernel of truth. But you're I'm gonna not end here up in, Jackie, me. you're going to end up in Rebels Next Memoir if you keep talking like that. It's really true. <laughs> however, what, however many what kernels she wants to give us, it's fine by me. Yeah. I don't need more kernels. Do you need more kernels? I actually do because something I've been doing recently um, is, is, popping my, is popping my own popcorn, like using kernels. Um, and it's so delicious. I'm so glad. What do you put yeah. on it? I can't believe it's not butter spray and Molly McButter powder. Yum. Yeah, it's really good. Are you ready for our next story? Mm-hmm. Because this weekend was Easter. It was. And we were waiting to see what the royal family might get up to. Oh, we were? Oh, we were. King Charles. Wait, it's Easter. It was Easter, but. That she, means she's back, no? No, she spoke out before Easter. So she null and voided the original statement by coming but back before Easter. But she said she was going to be back to work after Easter, no? Yeah, but I think when she came out, I think if people have left her alone, maybe, and she could have, you know, went through everything in private she might have done a little bit after easter just to keep people at bay mm -hmm. but now that the cat's out of the bag like fuck you i'm not going to work no so true but king charles was back to work he did a surprise walkabout after sitting um at the easter service amid his cancer treatment so he's back at him again king charles accompanied by queen camilla you know she loves that like dies for it she's earned it She's been through a lot, that's for sure. And, you know, she's, you know, say what you want about those two absolute fucking freaks. Um, they are in love. Like, deeply, deeply. Like, True they are, love. They are. They're soulmates. They're in love. True love. Whoa, whoa. They're in love. You can hear it in the silence. 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 Woo. You can feel it on the way home. Way home. Way home. Way, way home. home. Woo. Um, but, uh, you know, speaking of the royals in America, I found the Kardashian um, Easter to be incredibly interesting. What's so funny is I read one, two, three, four, five, six words of that article before we moved on. Like, seriously, who gives a fuck? No, no, the headline was the story. Also, speaking of Taylor's vocals... It's got to be her on bodyguard. Even you though think? they said it wasn't. Yeah, I know. But you think? I think. Even though the statement that said that it wasn't, like, wasn't an ironclad statement. It was like, someone told people. Like, it leaves room for non-verification. Yeah. No, it's very interesting. It really sounds like her. What do you think? <sighs> So a lot of people had a lot to say about our conversation on Friday, talking about Taylor and Beyonce, like doing a potential collaboration. And I think that um, somebody had made a good point. Like, you know, if Taylor's on the album, like the whole thing becomes about Taylor. That's just like currently how she rolls, you know? Not, uh, Even, yes, everything becomes about Taylor. Everything like smaller than Taylor becomes about Taylor. But like Beyonce, I don't think, like this is a masterpiece. If they did, like, I don't think it becomes about Taylor. For me. By the way, I listen to a lot more of the album. That's my opinion. I listened to a lot more of the album. That song, Yaya. Oh, I don't know if I've registered so that one yet. I was listening to it Shotgun again this morning. Shotgun, baby. Driving me crazy. Oh, that one's it. so good. Yeah, that's good. Down the 405. It's really so good. It really, it's something that needs time. Like, people are like, already out here being like, I hate it, I love it. Like, how the fuck do you know? You don't know. You don't know. Now, back to what I was just saying. Oh, Kardashian Easter. By the way, I just want to say, like, it's been a really long time since the Kardashians, like, did something that got my attention. Honestly, I feel like I just sort of like like their Instagrams and just move on with my life. But I found myself like so intrigued. They really worked out, you know, some good content. Kendall was out here making TikToks. I thought they all looked gorgine. Chris went all out for, you know, the Easter decor. And it appears as though Haley and Justin were there because they had eggs. Did you see? Oh, cute. No, the only content I saw was Chloe's uh, carousel. Well, then Chloe's kids were looking so goddamn cute. And I was trying to figure out because the, I, I haven't seen pictures of the girls in so long and honestly they've grown up so much I don't know who was who really and I couldn't tell was that dream yeah dream was in blue oh dream Chicago was in blue was Chicago in purple, and okay true was in pink 
Okay, okay. I really wasn't sure um, if that was Dream and if they were like including her because I feel like she used to look very distinct and now I can't recognize her. Yeah, they're like triplets. Yes, they are. Like Chicago, True, but and also, Dream. Stormy's their age too. Yeah, but I would know Stormy like the back of my hand. Where was Stormy? She, I'm sure she was there. Stormy Lou, I don't know. She was totally there. And were the Kardashian Barker crew there? I haven't kept up with Kardashian Easter like you have. Well, Kim North and uh, Chris made a TikTok, so I know that like they were there. Of course, they were there. Um, Chloe was there. They were definitely all there. Because also they were in Palm Springs, and Courtney and Travis have a house there. They do. Kylie has a house there. Yeah. They were definitely all there. Maybe like the content is forthcoming. Maybe some people got there early, made some content. Okay. You know, maybe it looked like beautiful. Are... They had this like egg dyeing station for the kids. It was like so legit. It was so cute. And Chris they went were, all out. And they were hard boiled eggs. Yes. We've learned since yesterday those are hard boiled eggs. Yum. It, it was a fair question. Did they have taco meat? No. And that's why I, I didn't go. Are you ready for our next story? What number? Four. <gasps> no, I'm not. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're going to want to get ready. The fourth and fifth story are brought to you by Vegamore. Real change happens when you're consistent and achieving the hair of your dreams is no exception. Thanks to Vegamore, sticking to our hair routine has never been easier and we are seeing the results that we've always wanted. So Vegamore is a fabulous hair care brand and their products are 100% cruelty free. They are never formulated with potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. And when it comes to seeing results, the key with Vegamore products and with anything really is consistency. We have made it part of our daily routine. Uh, for me, that hair shedding issue and just like thinning of the scalp, a lot of scalp visibility um, that I was having last year. I did a lot of things and so many people recommended the Vegamore Grow Serum and that's what I did. I've been on the subscription for many, many months. I never run out because it always arrives and it's really good to stay. You have to be consistent with it. I do it like every night and it's one of the only serums that I have found that doesn't leave your hair oily because you're like, how can you do a serum every night? Are you washing your hair every night? No, you don't have to. It, like you'll never know your hair is not oily or like flat. Having the monthly subscription of Grow the Hair Serum, Vegamore makes it super easy to stay consistent. When you sign up for the monthly subscription, you're getting one bottle or three bottle sets. Plus, you save more and you never run low on the products that you need to take care of your hair. So elevate your hair wellness routine this year with Vegamore. For a limited time, get 20% off your first subscription by going to vegamore.com slash toast and using code toast at checkout. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash toast. Code toast to save 20% off your first order. That's vegamore, V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash toast. Code toast, T-O-A-S-T. Today's episode is also brought to you by, by ASPCA Pet Health Insurance. Your pet is one of a kind, and so is their journey. While every playful moment is a memory in the making, sometimes our cats and dogs are a little too good at getting into trouble, and that's why you should check out ASPCA Pet Health Insurance. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program offers customizable accident and illness plans, making it easier for pet parents like you to help your pet get the care that they may need. The ASPCA Pet Health Insurance Program has been around for over 18 years, and they've helped more than 600,000 pets during that time. They allow you to customize your plan, helping ensure that your pet's plan is as unique as they are. And because vet bills can really add up, especially when you're least expecting it, having the proper coverage is paramount. And a brand like ASPCA is so trustworthy. And for pet health insurance, there's no no one better than ASPCA pet health insurance. And it's super simple to get and sign up. You use their app to submit a claim. You'll receive reimbursement for eligible vet bills, and it'll go directly into your bank account. With Theo, you know, we actually didn't have pet health insurance, which was so dumb, and I feel like a curse. And look what happened. With Tromeo, before we even got him, before he even set foot into our house, I had pet health insurance. So to explore coverage, visit ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash toast. That's ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash toast. ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash toast. This is a paid advertisement. Insurance is underwritten by either Independence American Insurance Company or United States Fire Insurance Company and produced by PTZ Insurance Agency Limited. The ASPCA is not an insurer and is not engaged in the business of insurance. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next story, major news. Lizzo says she quits 
on Instagram. So Lizzo put out a statement saying, I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look, my character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this shit. I quit. Peace out, sign emoji. So this is so layered. And I want to say, you know, when I read this statement, two words came to mind. Victim mentality. Like, it's, I feel like this is a, a strategy in her comeback. Like, let's not forget, you know, and there was recently news about her case. Like, she tried to get it thrown out. And not only did it not get thrown out, it got taken to the next level. Like, the person, the people suing her, like, have legitimate allegations of harassment. Like, and I feel like everything she's been doing recently has been an attempt to rebuild. And this is clearly, I think, like, a, an act to garner sympathy and it's not working but I will say like I do feel like there was one valid thing in, in what she said because she's like always the butt of the joke whenever anyone's like making a fat joke and like it is really mean and it's hard and like I actually have a lot of sympathy for that it's like not cool um but as it pertains to the bigger picture here like I'm not buying it yeah I I can't imagine this is part of like a concrete strategy because this is like so cheap you know cheap like everyone's mean I quit I like, quit it's bananas to say such a thing it's bananas unless is it an April Fool's no this was before well before this came out on Friday okay okay no I, I but the thing about I quit is like what do you quit you quit I quit caring I quit the music industry as a I whole. think that's how people understood I don't it. Think it is I think it's like I quit with trying to please you guys that's oh, what okay. I think okay not a resignation from her job. Well, I really saw this as a move. And I also saw like the feedback of people responding to it, not buying it either, which no, I thought was. Even the usual suspects who go for something like this, like, no. It's it's low. Yeah, it's low hanging fruit. I think she was just fed up and she posted this. I don't think it was part of a larger strategy. I think it will backfire because she needs to get her legal stuff sorted out before people can resume their fandom, honestly. Because the it's allegations true. are fucking wild and especially from her because she's one of those people who... Ellen. Jonathan Van Ness. Yeah, if kindness is your platform and you end up being a cunt, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, be a big deal. It's a big but, deal. And it's, but it's be the a Miranda Lambert. It's the fans. Miranda Lambert effect. Like when Miranda Lambert was being a nasty bitch, like nobody thought twice of it because that's her brand, nastiness. Like, she's, she's like, she's probably saying, I never said I was nice. She's like that, you know, cowgirl, renegade. Like she is, but with Ellen or Jonathan Van Ness, it's always the people who have built this platform off of like inclusivity and kindness. And if they end up being, being like the worst it it means more yeah it's it's just more surprising and more disappointing for their fans because they hold them to that standard because they've held their themselves and other people to that standard so she's got to sort that out seriously yeah. and maybe yeah I don't think she's quitting anything other than giving a shit for the moment yeah or maybe like Instagram for the day yeah which is always good always are you ready for our fifth and final story? Oh my God, it's coming to a close. It's bitter, yes, it's bittersweet, but it's actually um, a very upsetting story. Sorry to end on that note. But um, a little more child actor news because Zoe 101 actor Matthew Underwood says he was assaulted by his former agent and defends fellow Nick Nickelodeon stars staying, sti staying silent about quiet on set. I saw this. I read his whole statement. It was very well written and really poignant. Yes, yeah, so he played... Logan on Zoe 101, right? Oh my God, dreamboat. Everybody loved him. He was so hot. So he put out a statement on Instagram on Friday saying, when I was 19, quote, I was sexually harassed and then assaulted by my agent at the time who would spend a decent amount of time building trust with me as a friend and mentor. Again, my trust was betrayed and my self-image was crushed. I reported him to the agency and he has since been fired, although he is still active in the industry. This experience provoked my move away from LA and ending my pursuit of acting. He then explained why he was sharing his story of sexual harassment and assault, saying that, quote, many people have been blowing up his email and calling him a pedophile defender following the release of Quiet on Set. He said, I imagine many of my friends in the business are being equally harassed if they aren't joining in the chorus. So I'm sharing this with hope that some of you can recognize that just because a person doesn't shout from the rooftops that pedophiles are bad or that people can suck, that does not mean they don't have their own reasons for staying silent, good reasons, personal reasons. Oh my God, like so poignant. Thank God somebody said it. How 
the Quiet on Set documentary became like an internet referendum on which child actors are speaking out and which are not. When I'm sure, even if some of them weren't, you know, sexually abused, I'm sure they all have their own trauma from that time. Like what we know is being a child actor is never perfect. It's never really a positive situation. And good things come out of it, of course. Um, and how it just became like us keeping score and not, you know, demanding answers from Nickelodeon, demanding how Brian Peck got cast on Sweet Life of Zack and Cody after being in prison for being a child predator, like all of these things, how it just became like a competition of keeping score, like really is, I think, so um, indicative of how, or no, em emblematic. emblematic, it's emblematic of how like actual, you know, nuanced conversations and real change, like, is, like people on the internet are just moronic, they're brain dead, and this is exactly proof of that and I'm so glad he said it he's like everyone's been up my ass okay great now let me relive my trauma thank you so much you're helping you're helping you helped right and anyone else who's not speaking out even if they didn't go through something as serious traumatic as this, like has their own reasons and had their own experience and I doubt anyone there had an overall positive experience and wasn't like totally messed up from this right so just like leave them alone like why is that everyone's takeaway post the documentary like to attack the kids because I think not to, like I, I think just on a really surface level like they want someone to blame yeah and they know these people like who are the faceless executives at Viacom so and true. Nickelodeon like who are they because that's who we, there needs to be blamed but we don't know who they are so true actually so people just like reflex oh you I know you you are bad yeah that's true. It's like this faceless, nameless. It's a big they. It's a group blob. of people. You yeah. can't really like lay blame with someone. So you, you find a scapegoat so that you can like, I don't know, feel justified and big and mighty and righteous. No, I love that. That's an excellent explanation for it. It's But it's not an excuse whatsoever. And like be smarter than that. Seriously. It's just like leave everyone alone. Yeah. So those uh, are the Fast Five stories. Definitely and has, needed to know them. That new part of Quiet On Set hasn't come out yet, has no, it? No, next week, next I believe. Week. Um, those are the Fast Five stories. You know, some of them might be real. Some of them might be fake. Take all them with a grain of salt then. Take everything today with a grain of salt. Stay prepared, but also, you know, it's okay if you got got, you know? Yeah, it's part of the fun. That means you were a part of something. Someone cared about you enough to play a little joke on you. Yeah. Oh, honey, you made a little joke. You know? Yeah. So that's our show. Ex great work. You know, just excellent. Good stuff. Right back at you, partner. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast and Monday Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We are also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeart Radio, Castbox, all the places where we listen to podcasts. My NASA Toast leave a five star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Love ya. Bye.